Welcome back to Let's Play Second Five Devil Within. We're now on part six, and there's something I was gonna bring up in the last part, but I completely slipped my mind because of how goddamn boring that area was. Uh, I made a comment back in like part three where I said the first two levels happen to have the same song, which is a remix of Jin's theme from Tekken Three. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> Upon actually listening back to the footage on levels one and two, turns out they both have two different themes entirely. Although I'm not sure how it's really significant because um, every single boss fight in this game happens to use Jin Steam, which is odd because you know couldn't like <gasps> think about anything else. But eh, I'm I'm not entirely sure what they were thinking. But I've already made comments about that earlier. All right, so this fucking room right here, you gotta. Uh, this seems a little weird at first and a little undoable, but. Uh, as you guys see, th the answer to this is actually pretty fucking silly. You're, like, really, I, I have no idea how I didn't figure this out sooner. Alright, so, my first idea was just, like, scout the area, look around, see what, like, yeah, yeah, I got some pillars here you can do stuff with, but nothing there besides, like, some orbs. Until a few minutes later, I'm like, wait, feels like I'm missing something. I have no idea what's going on, though. Ah, oh, fuck, more enemies. <laughs> God damn it, random spawn points, where do you go? Ah. Uh. Yo, it's one thing to make spawn spawn points mandatory, but it's another thing to make it so you they're unseeable and you don't know you're supposed to find them entirely, and you can't progress unless you find them first. That's just dumb. But anyway, you destroy you beat those guys up, so causes a switch to appear, and whew, I forgot what that switch does actually, but I remember something pretty important. Cut, makes one pop on the other side. I really gotta pay so close attention to this. Uh, footage up close, but actually, to be told, I'm a little curious what it was myself, because frankly, it's been a few little while since I've actually played this entire thing. Oh, that was it. Yeah, you gotta push the switch over to the left. Use that as a jumping off point so you can quickly activate the other one. You see that? It's power of hindsight that really makes it more, uh, better to figure out. Usually I'm a complete dumbass when it comes to figuring this stuff out in video games, but I think I got a little lucky there. Dash it! Luckily there was a spawn point right there, so hmm, wasn't that bad. Usually they just boot you out and push you, push you back and start the room, but there was actually not that bad. Time for more dickery! Actually, no, this one's not too bad. Uh, let's see, where was I going with really? Oh yeah, I have uh, a between uh. Getting my thoughts together between parts five and six, I started to think a little bit about o what was the deal with Ogre and how there's potentially more than one Ogre left on Earth. Well, what made me curious was that there is a little bit, of do a bit of text later on. This I don't know if it's already passed or not. How Ogre invite looks like he's inviting Jin to take him on, like face to face. Nah, uh, I have no idea. Just because of how powerful Ogre knows Jin is or whatnot, but there's earlier on back before part three started or before level three started uh jen commented how he thought he saw ogre sneering at him so this would tell me that ogre might have knowledge of jen already and might want to like settle a score and the only sco score that will come to mind of him being settled is um well ogre kind of killing jen's uh quote unquote killing jen's mom like how I keep saying Jin and Jim sometimes, but anyway. And also how Jin kind of kicked <laughs> True Ogre's ass in the Tekken 3 tournament. So, thinking about that, I was like, wait, but these aren't the same Ogres though, so why would he want to score all? And I was like, wait, do all, all these Ogres happen to share the same consciousness? Now this, is, now this seems really probably unimportant in the grand scheme of things considering, oh my god, the platform just knocked an enemy off. That was great. Probably gonna kick more off, actually, but... Considering the grand scheme of things, Ogre's probably not gonna be brought up in a story again, but I ha kinda have doubts about that because, you know, Azazel being a thing, and how Namco just loves bringing throwbacks to fucking Ogre, what with him being in Tekken Tag 2 and Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I have a feeling there's gonna be more Ogres in the future, and considering... He's ending in Tekken Tag 2, yeah. I like how you haven't even touched Tekken 3 yet. <laughs> I could think of these conspiracy theories for Ogre. This is, uh. Hmm. I got some. I got too much free time in my hands sometimes. Alright, so what is the deal with this room? Absolutely nothing. 
thank you, past me, for just looking around suspiciously and be like, hey, wait, nothing here. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah, as you can, if you're paying attention to the minimap on the bottom right corner, you can probably see that this is where the levels start getting a little beefy. And a little convoluted at the same time, too, because, uh, well, the map doesn't really mark where we've already been or where important uh, things are, like switches or, uh, God forbid, devil emblems, because that'd be nice. Oh, God. Oh, fuck this room. This is the room I was thinking about earlier. Well, you got... That's the entrance to the boss of this area, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit, but anyway. Yeah, basically the entire the entirety of level 4 was just going around that one central hub area, activating switches until eventually you can get the weird pink purple tendril to stick out of the door. Okay, I'm not sure what this is going on with these entrances or these design choices. Apparently, net, apparently aliens in this series are pretty weird ass tastes. Strange, but... Okay, so now basically, um, now, believe it or not, there is actually context to this flowing orb that's just going around, uh, kicking me in the ass. Actually, truth be told, I did terribly in this, uh, boss light on this playthrough. Because the idea is, you have to dodge this orb as it flies around between platforms, and when it lowers the shield to, to uh, charge, I don't know if it's really doing anything or not, though. I know it summons enemies. I even miss these platforms so goddamn much, and I just always show up late. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, watch this. Nope, nope, you're fucked. Well, shit. And remember, you don't really have any means of recovery in this level outside of picking out the red orb, so hope you uh, manage to find them often. Again, this would probably be phenomenal using regular gin. I should know because, well, I shouldn't know this because I've already done a playthrough with regular gin, but eh, I don't care to do that again. Too, da too goddamn annoying. Oh, she's coming around from our pass. Actually, you can block that, but it'll cause chip damage, so I just prefer to try to dodge all together. Oh, and yeah, you, this thing, uh, when it flies around, can actually knock you off if you're trying to uh, jump between platforms, and that uh, becomes quite annoying. And you begin to realize Jin's mid-air game is kind of crap because he can't recover to mid-air. He can't, like, he has, like, no maneuverability once he jumps. He can't, like, really move around anywhere, anywhere, so... It becomes painfully obvious here that Jin's jumps are pretty stilted and terrible. Even with wings, you'd think that would be fair a little better, but nope. Again, not double trigger. Not our problem. Fuck. Ugh. Mm, let's go by. So, you know, that fucking Namco, if. They wanted to make a game series that can like compete on level with Devil May Cry in terms of combat. They they totally can. It's doable. You just gotta be invested. You gotta have tight controls. You gotta have solid art direction, good story, great music. I mean, shit. If you can, let's just take this game. Just take Devil Within as an example and just increase his mobility, give him different powers, different new powers in this form. Maybe like give him like a different kind of like move sets that he like change between to have like different styles like a heavy hitting one or like a quick melee one or just like fuck just give him like light attacks and heavy attacks so it's like he's got smashing options and just rush down options. Just give a better fucking minimap. Have it so when he goes uh Delgin he doesn't lose health, maybe? That'd be great. I'm, I'm just spitballing these ideas right now, just like throw them at the board, and these will probably make this mode so much better. Oh, and these, this platform is also uh, moving when it gets to one, so uh, be sure to brush up on your platforming skills and be sure to take it on. I think here's if I'm going to make this one. Nope, <laughs> didn't make that one either. Fuck. I'm pretty sure this boss fight takes up like a third of the video, too. Of course, whenever I'm on my way down and I have the basic platform guy. Strike a pose. Thank you, dive kick. Of course, one of its attacks is uh, just sending out this little energy ball having to attack you. Besides, you know, having to be able to fly into you and just summoning more enemies to take you on. Basically, this is one of the laziest boss bosses I've ever seen in video games. So, uh, yeah. Although, apparently, this is the... Apparently, this is the key that is meant to hold Ogre in place. I don't know. Ah, oh, shit. You see what I mean there? <laughs> you, you can get knocked off a platform so easily, it's ridiculous. 
Ugh, I don't like that. So I'm just learning here that if you want to do a good mad solid amount of damage without losing a platform, you just uh, walk in, do a double jump. Fucking hey, dude, really? Oh no, I'm just gonna ignore how I'm falling. Thank you, Devilgen, for having wings and not being able to use them. Where's I just going with this? Ah. I don't like my trash all the time. Whenever something happens, I just completely lose it. That's what also makes it kind of entertaining, too. Yeah, see, you do take a little bit of jet damage when you're blocking them, but overall, it's not the worst thing in the world. You just gotta turtle this, uh, these things, and eventually the shield will go down. I promise you, it will. And it's not happening today, sadly. Oh, goddamn. Vegeta now is deactivated. Yep, it's deactivated now. This boss can't seriously be this much of a dick and just literally fuck with me now. Or maybe it is. I don't know. We should probably leave the platform before it disappears, you know. Because good level design. Uh, it's like that one fucking boss from Mega Man Base where you're ba you're balancing on a platform. I know that's a completely random ass reference, but I do watch a lot of uh, Giants reviews, especially from the, for the Mega Man Marathon. That was interesting. How that, w that one boss, when it died and you're bouncing on the platform, the platform immediately like, falls into the pit of acid. That's weird. And now Jin's wondering what the hell he killed, and I'm wondering the same thing. Except when you look further into it, it turns out this thing was probably put in place to hold off Ogre. I don't know how Jin figured that out randomly, unless we're being told that, the audience. Yeah, now, now it's like Jin... Uh, Jin's being baited by Ogre to take him on. Hence the only reason I think that Ogres have of collective consciousness. Which would be pretty cool actually since, you know, they kind of are like made like weapons. Anyway, time for the final level and this is where it's real dickery. Oh man. As if the first, as if level 4 wasn't enough, now it's about to get a whole hell of a lot worse. Oh boy. So the start here isn't too bad, it's a pretty straightforward hallway, although you just get swamped and enemies in the very first room you walk into. You know, because the usual thing. Hi Bruce Moveset, how are you doing today? I think I'm gonna call that Moveset Brian when I first talked about that, I don't know why. Up, oh, ran platform, hoping to catch you off guard. Not That gap's not even on a fucking mini-map. It should be like a small blocked out area there to signify that. Uh. Again, I think you could make this game, this mini game, so much better if you just gave it a better mini map. Shit. Yeah. I don't know how they handle it in Tekken 4 and Tekken 3 with, um, what's the move called? G, G Force mode? No. What was that organization Lars was a part of? I cannot remember off the top of my head. Uh,. Fuck it, uh, whatever that, whatever those modes are in Tekken 3 and 4 that allow you to basically go into like a beat up mode, which is like pretty cool. Uh, I wonder how they handle it in comparison to this, because I know it's got like heavy beat em up themes like Tekken 6's mode, which I don't remember that has, no, that has a mini map on it. Although those are so straightforward and no platform involved, so eh, I don't know. Sometimes I'm not sure why I like more, just make it a straightforward beat em up or try to like combine different elements into it, because this, I can dig this, if they just make it better, you know. Just model after Devil May Cry, because, you know, DMC3 had a good amount of platforming in it. And it managed to blend that in combat beautifully, so, I'm not sure. Eh. Like I said earlier, I'm more than confident Namco could make a pretty good beat-em-up, if they tried hard enough. I don't know if there's already any other beat-em-ups that they've done, though. Eh, no. I do remember, you're not gonna believe me, and I, frankly, I don't blame you, but um, there's a game out there called Soul Calibur Broken Sword? So, Sword something? It's a Soul Calibur game for the Wii, and it's basically this exact same formula, except they made it with motion controls, so. Yeah, Namco does like experimenting around with platforming games and trying to implement the fine games with our genres, and it sometimes works. <laughs> No, no, I still gotta kick out Tekken 6 as a story mode. For that time. Although I think the core of what they want is still with, uh, you know, the, the fighting aspect. Namco's got it down. They know that people are here for the fighting games, but in the same package, I, 
fucking also have to run like platforming and some other weird shit. Let's speak of weird shit. There's some really weird games in the second franchise. I'm not gonna talk about in the next part. So like for that and shitty level design. See you then.